Good morning, everyone. It looks like we've got some folks joining us for our webinar this morning. Excited to have all of you. We're just going to give a couple more minutes here for folks to join, and then we'll get started. Welcome, Corinne Joe. Welcome, Drew. Welcome, Davis. Glad to have you. Hello, Samuel. Just going to give one more minute or so for folks to hop on. Right. Well, it's about three minutes after 11, and I think a good time for us to go ahead and launch our webinar today. just want to say a warm welcome to everyone. Thank you for taking the time this morning to join us. We're really excited to present this opportunity for a conversation around overcoming our performance tracking challenging in staffing firms. So before we get started, I think some introductions are in order, and I'd love to begin just by introducing myself. My name is Brooke Hamill. I have the pleasure of being the moderator of this lovely webinar today. I am the Senior Operations Manager with Ringover US. And I've been either in the telecommunications or the communication software development space since 2000. So coming up on 25 years of experience in this space. And I'm very fortunate to have seen the transformation of communications and how a direct benefit of this evolution has been you know, deeper insights becoming available overall in the way that people communicate and how we can improve communications through access to data and making data-based and data-driven decisions. Part of my role entails leading initiatives that bring our platform, which is Ringover, to the staffing and recruiting industry and demonstrating the importance of access to data around critical conversations and how access to this has really been pivotal in transforming Ringover into a leading name in the staffing and recruiting industry. So I'm really excited to be able to speak to our participants today as they share their insights on overcoming performance tracking challenges and drawing from our successes and learnings, both at Ringover and at ProtoScore. So welcome again to everyone. Um, I'd like to introduce to you first, Hannah Jones. She's the technical partner manager here at Ringover. And Hannah has actually been kind of a in the staffing and recruiting industry in a lot of different roles for the last five years, beginning as a locum tenens recruiter. Since then, she has been on the production side of staffing and sales at an agency and, and in a staffing tech company, which means she has had experience firsthand in the tracking and of her metrics and her data. So this experience has given her insight into strategies that worked well through her individual metrics tracking and through talking with countless clients about the importance of their analytics and data tracking. And she spent much of the last two and a half years talking with staffing firms about the importance of integrating their tech stack to make sure their data exists all in one place and that they own their full data story. Her experience with Ringover specifically has allowed her to have a keen look into how production team calls, messages, and outreach can be incredibly powerful in empowering data to managers and sales teams and recruiters alike. Data can be your friend and improve your company as a whole if used correctly, and I think we would all agree that that is in fact the case. So welcome, Hannah. Glad to have you as a, a speaker here on our webinar. Thanks, Brooke. 
And Jake Berman, he's the director of sales with ProtoScore. I uh, just want to give you a little bit of information about Jake. Jake is a seasoned sales professional with over six years of experience in the technology sector, most recently in data intelligence for employee success. He's the director of sales at ProtoScore, and he has been instruments, instrumental in driving the company's recent focus on the staffing and recruiting industry, leveraging his deep understanding of the unique challenges and opportunities that this sector presents. ProtoScore has attended several staffing focused events recently, securing speaking and presentation roles and sharing insights and best practices within the industry. Throughout his career, Jake has consistently delivered results by building strong relationships, identifying client needs, and crafting tailored solutions that drive growth and efficiency. So welcome, Jake. We're so glad to have you. Good to be here. So this is a great um, point to segue into some of the first questions that we have for our participants today. And Jake, you're a great person to start with based on your most recent experience in data intelligence. I'm curious what your thoughts are around some of the most common obstacles that staffing firms face in performance tracking. Yeah, I think, you know, the the biggest thing that we see, you know, the kind of overarching reason here is that they just don't know where to start. Uh, they either don't know about the data that they have within the systems that they currently own, or they know that the data is there, but they don't know how to use it. Um, if, if most of the staffing firms that are either on this call or, or the ones that we deal with, uh, I would say they know the data is there, you know, when they're looking in their ATS, when they're looking in their office suite, when they're looking at the phone system, all of those tools that they're using have some type of analytics and reporting uh, involved in those tools but it's hard to match up those basic analytics that they're seeing with the outcomes and results that they're seeing from their recruiters, their staffing members, their salespeople, and the rest of the people in the organization. So trying to make those two silos kind of connect the dots there on seeing the data, making it make sense with what the results and the outcomes that we're seeing are, um, but mostly it's just knowing where to start. It's knowing where that data lives within the systems itself, uh, and the tools that they're using, it's finding the, that data, finding the time to uh, to make sense and digest that information and pair it with the outcomes that we're seeing. Uh, but also, you know, that goes along with not knowing where to start. It's it's no it's the question of where do where do we even begin? Where does the you know how do I talk to my employees about it? How do I use this with my managers? How do I have teach my managers how to use this data and performance tracking to coach up my recruiters better. How do we identify issues? What does the data mean and things like that? I think it's, it's, it's a new problem that we're all experiencing, especially in the staffing world of just this avalanche of data that can be really, really, really valuable to our organization in a multitude of ways but it does take a lot of bandwidth for these companies and the people at these organizations to figure out exactly how to use it. So I would say that's probably the biggest obstacle that we see is how do we start, how do we implement it, and then how do we use it for the best of our organization? Yeah, that's a great point. Yeah. I wanted to add one thing, Brooke, before we move on. Um, I completely agree. And it's just such a obstacle trying to get all the data in one place and figuring out where the data even exists in the first place and um, excited to talk through how we can help you guys get some strategies there today. Awesome. Yeah, and I and just a, some thoughts to share. It seems to me the more exposed I am to the staffing and recruiting industry, it definitely seems that you know, the way that recruiters have gotten accustomed to working in recruiting and just doing their day to day jobs has really been in a somewhat of a, of a disconnected from a central infrastructure kind of way where they're possibly using their personal cell phones or, you know, independent tools that they've found to be helpful for, you know, improving their own efficiency and productivity. Um, and it's been interesting to see that as we've, you know, seen the evolution of technology and, and different software platforms, how a lot of times, you know, once that information becomes more centralized, how profoundly empowering it is for these staffing and recruiting um, companies to pivot and start to make some really powerful changes that can really move their business forward. So Hannah, I'm curious if you've actually seen any staffing firms um, be able to 
you know, overcome these obstacles um, with, you know, access to data and information? And, and if you've been able to see that, how did, how did they do that? Yeah, good question. I'm, I'm happy to get started here. Um, uh, as I was mentioning before, I think that one of the biggest obstacles we just discussed is obviously figuring out the way to make that data meaningful, but also where is it? And I think as you're touching on, Brooke, there's a lot of um, there's a lot of data floating around in a lot of staffing agencies that's not centralized. And one of the biggest things that I would recommend is just making sure that all of your data is in one place and it's feeding into one place. And then from there, as Jake was saying, you can use it to figure out your strategies of what's working and what's not. You know, Are these cold calls every day producing the return that you hope they will? Or do you need to start diversifying your outreach? Things like that. You can't really make decisions ed with education unless you have all of it in one place and have a tool like Protoscore, for instance, that can give you the feedback on what that data even means. Uh, but also with Ringover, I've seen a lot of our clients use our tool like the leaderboard, for instance, which is just a... Um, a piece of the dashboard where you can watch who has made the most calls of the day. And, and that alone has been something that's really helped a lot of recruiters. I mean, I think back to my own, when I, my own career as a recruiter back in the day, I um, really was tallying every single call to make sure I hit my metrics. And that's just funny for me to think about now because it, they're so, you know, so much easier to just pull up a, a web page that's that's tracking every single call you make to have peace of mind that you're hitting your metrics, but also to have the data to prove like if I'm not getting the results I need, what changes could I make? So simple things like that. We also have some really powerful dashboards that show the history of calls being made, when they're being made. And then you can think through that same question, you know, are we getting the connect rate we want? Okay, well, let's look at when we're making these calls and maybe make adjustments, which is something that we've actually even done internally with our sales team. So uh, just some things that have really helped people tackle obstacles is really simplifying where the data is and simplifying what you're tracking uh, to be able to figure out what it means and make changes. Yeah, and once they get that data, you know, I think, you know, humans are creatures of habit. And I think especially in, in times of, of you know, economic downturn or hardship or anything like that, which it seems like we're we're in right now, being able to to find out what works for your organization, right? I think we either get stuck in a creature of habit, this is how we've always done things, so let's continue to do things this way regardless of external factors. Or what we also see a lot of too is, uh, I read an article on LinkedIn or I saw a new segment on CNBC. Let's say it's about remote work or hybrid work or something like that, right? Sure, that you know, some of that information can apply to my organization if I'm running a company or running a staffing firm, but my organization's different. Every staffing firm in, in the world is going to be different from the other staffing firms. So while I can read these news articles and watch these news segments, I would like as a, as a manager, as a, as a staffing firm owner, I would like to see the black and white data for my organization to see how we work the best, whether it's remote or hybrid, whether it's you know how we're doing things in the ATS, whether it's outbound activity. I want to know how my company works based off of our niche, based off of our size, based off of where we focus, uh, based off of how we've been doing things and make the changes and enact the coaching that's going to affect us. Um, mm -hmm. So it takes kind of those big up in the clouds, uh, best practices type thing and being able to apply that with your data on your organization uh, to be able to see, OK, what is best for us? What's best for my department? What's best for this particular employee? Being able to see all of that together very specifically for my organization is typically very, very powerful. I think it's so interesting, too, when you think about how critical the outcomes of these activities within, you know, a recruiter recruiting someone for a new role or a salesperson, you know, driving revenue and signing deals in whatever space that they're in, how critical those activities are to a company's success. And yet how specifically in the staffing and recruiting space, we seem to be so behind in providing visibility to all of that. So just like you're saying, you know, getting everybody 
everybody to that place where they're on board and they're lever using these tools and collecting this information um, and learning how to move forward, you know, with that information, just seeing how that can be such a transformative um, piece of, of information to begin to work with. I just find it fascinating that this seems to be the last frontier in some ways of, of um, places where that correlation absolutely exists, but we just haven't put things in place to measure it yet. So I'm really curious to see what your thoughts are on this, Jake, um, how a company would get started in tracking important data like this. I mean, it seems so critical, right? Like understanding how many calls your agents are making is just a very, very basic metric. But if you don't have visibility to that and all you have is sort of the, the end result outcomes of numbers, you know, um, sales deals being closed, but you have no visibility to what led to that, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting to see. Um, so I'm curious again, how do you, how do you think companies get started with tracking this, this data? I'm, I'm curious what your thoughts are on both from a technology perspective, but also, you know, how do we leverage that data to change behaviors as well? Yeah. So I think the biggest thing that you want to focus on, if you're just getting started out with this, or if this is an, an initiative that you haven't really thought of for, for your particular organization before, is, is finding the difference between, between lagging and leading indicators. Right now, what we see across the staffing firms or, what, or sales departments, whatever, which, what have you, is we are relying on lagging indicators. So for a staffing firm, for sales organizations, we are looking at, okay, did they hit their quota, right? We are not doing a good job of looking at the leading indicators, the activity that happens to get them to their quota to see if we're going to hit that number, right? So if you're just starting out, my recommendation would be to find the data that you have today. You don't need a new tool. You don't need to plug in a bunch of stuff right off the bat. Find the data that you have today. So look in your ATS, look in your, in your UCAS system, look at your office suite. The data is there. It's going to take you a little bit of time to, to dig into it and digest it and make the correlations, but you want to find the leading active leading indicators activity data so that you can see if Hannah and Brooke are, are, are staffing recruiters on, on my team, I want to see activity for today and this week to see if I think that they're going to be hitting quota at the end of the month or the end of the quarter. Right. And I want to look at that data historically. I want to look at last quarter. Hannah hit 110 percent of, of quota. That's great. Good job, Hannah. Thank you. Uh, but I want to see what activity led to that. So not only can I see what she did to hit 110 percent of quota and use that uh, how I want to use that, but I can track then how she's trending this quarter or how she's trending this month. Right. And I can use, if Hannah's my A player on my team, I can use that information and look, compare her to my other team members to see if I see that activity. It's going to take you some time, right? It's going, this is a, this is a bandwidth intensive activity, but I think the results and what you get out of it are, are going to be key. I think a big, big part of this too is looking at and thinking of how you're interacting with your employees about this new kind of way of managing them, right? I think when we look at data, when we look at how they're working, right, it can feel, it can feel or be perceived by the employee as micromanaging or being too involved and not just letting me do my thing as a recruiter or a salesperson, right? So being very open, transparent, and having a bi-directional feedback loop of why we're doing this, right? Why are we looking at this new information of this outbound activity, of your logging in the ATS, of your meetings, of your phone calls, of your, of your emails, et cetera? How, why are we looking at it this way? And what are my goals as a company with this new initiative? Right. So how I'm not using this to find people who are slacking off. I'm not using this to uh, have a reduction in, in my workforce. I'm using this to make us better, to make you better, to make you more successful. Right. That's my that's my focus as a, as a leader at, at my organization is finding the ways I can use this information to be able to pull it into making you more money. Easiest way to put it. Right. Um, when you get to, or if you've started doing this already, or you, you, you start with this and you get to a point where this is too tough, this, there's too much going on, 
Protoscore is a great tool to uh, be able to plug in and use that. So what Protoscore does is we aggregate all of that data for you, we digest it for you, and we give you those insights and information that you need to see across your suite of tools to be able to see exactly how your employees are working. So you can look at a very quick glance on how's my A player Hannah doing compared to my B or C player Brooke, how, is, how are they doing compared to a new hire, et cetera, et cetera. There are tools out there like Protoscore available to, to assist you with that. But when we're getting started, the biggest thing is just understanding where the data lives understanding what it means compared to our outcomes and communicating with our employees of how we want to use it and why we want to use it. Yeah, I think that's a really important point that you were making about the buy-in from your team, because that's something we hear a lot when we're talking about our coaching tools and Ringover, as well as, you know, if you're talking to a recruiter, they're like, whoa, I don't know if I want my manager to be able to jump into my conversations and listen. And I, I understand where they're coming from. I know Brooke said earlier, like I have been in the place where my metrics have been tracked and I understand that feeling because I'm a bit of a perfectionist. And if I think that people are tracking me, I, I just assume that it's to make you know, a, a reason to say that I'm bad at my job. That is not what it is. And it's, if you can just communicate, like you said, it's a way to make you more money. It's also a way to be transparent with management and there's you know an, an open conversation there available because there's there's no question marks there's no assumption there's no um reading between the lines of what's not there which can happen if you don't have that data in front of you and that i think is a really good peace of mind that you can share with your team is like we're not doing this because you know we want to find reasons to say that you're not doing a good job we are doing this to try to figure out how to you know be able to be on the same page and communicate simply where you can make some changes to be so we as a company can be better or you know you can train yourself with the data that's one thing that i know um i think is really cool about protoscore really just any set of data that your team has access to they get they get to see it and they get to self coach and you know improve as well and i think that's really powerful so as long as communication is good about the power of this on both ends it can be really transformative for a team i think yeah so that's actually a great segue into our next question um, this is for you jake to start you know we know that there is a direct relationship between recruiter productivity and re re revenue growth which has kind of been something we've been discussing and exploring during this webinar. But I'm just curious what your thoughts are on how organizations can help to drive that activity in a proactive way. Yeah, we've had, uh, you know, I would say as a company, we've had a ton of success connecting with and providing value for staffing firms for exactly this reason. Uh, recruiters are activity driven, right? Um, Salespeople are activity driven, so we have a lot in common. We understand how they work. We understand what the, the goals and, and what success means to, to the company itself. So being able to provide that data in a clean and easily digestible way uh, is key. You know, so I mentioned in the previous question, it's going to take some bandwidth for you guys. If you're just starting out, you're wanting to dive into your office suite and your UCAS, your ATS, your Zoom meetings and things like that. It's going to take you some bandwidth to connect all those dots, right? If we're looking at Hannah's entire workday over everything she does, over all of the tools that I provide for her, it's going to take me some time every day to look at just the information for that day, let alone look at it historically, look at the trends going forward, connecting the dots with her quota attainment and successes and the value that she's attaining for the company. So what we want to do is to be able to get a system in place, whether you find a system for yourself, whether you implement a, process, a, a tool like Protoscore, of making that easy so that not only can you look at what Hannah's workday looked like today, but what does it look like historically? What are my trends going forward? And what, is, what, what does what I'm seeing today mean for her future state, right? So it's that battle between the lagging and leading indicators that I brought up uh, on the last question. Being able to have that data all in one place is one thing. Being able to digest it, get the insights out of it, and get value from it is a very different thing. Mm -hmm. Being able to connect those dots and see, okay, 
This is what Hannah did today and over the past few weeks. Based on what I know about Hannah, based on the data that I'm seeing, uh, either in my spreadsheet or with Protoscore, she's not going to hit quota, right? And so I've got to be able to intervene here and be able to uh, be able to address the issues that we're having based on the data that I'm seeing, right? And be able to make her successful instead of waiting three weeks, her not hitting quota and having a conversation at that point. That's not really helpful for, for right. me as, as an organization, yeah. right? Sure. So exactly. what I wanna do is get ahead of that, right? Uh, if Hannah's my A player, she's always up here. These are things that we're always, you know, she's always doing well. What I can do then with Protoscore or, you know, with the data is I can then compare her to maybe some of my teammates who are struggling, my B players, my C players, and go, okay, what are the differences in the activity and the data that I'm looking at between my A player and my C player? So that when I have that conversation with my C player, I'm not going to them and saying, rah, rah, let's do better right? Like you need to, you need to improve here without giving them some tangible coaching information. Now I'm able to look at the exact differences and go to my C player with three very tangible, very actionable things that they can do to improve. Also, while you're looking at the data, and I think we've all done this on this call as, as managers in the past, without that data, you're having that rah, rah coaching discussion. And then you sit back and you twiddle your thumbs and you go, okay, Cross my fingers, I, I hope that, that that stuck, right? I hope that they're able to do what I said and get better, even though I didn't give them much information. With Pro, Protoscore or with the data that you're looking at, when you have that coaching discussion with Hannah or the C player on a Monday, you can go look at that data in Protoscore on a Tuesday, on a Wednesday, and see if the changes that you asked for are being enacted by that employee. Right. So you can see very quickly, OK, did the discussion that I have impact them enough to make the changes that we want to see for the organization, for the good of themselves to hit that outcome that we have desired at the end of that particular time frame, month, quarter, et cetera. Right. What you can also see and I think is really important is uh, being able to look at, you know, if you're a, if you have an A player, you want to keep them right. So looking at this information, looking at this data and seeing if maybe they're getting to a point of burnout, right? Where they're burning, where they're working so hard that they're gonna go, they're gonna quit soon, right? Or does that A player starting to pull away? Maybe we haven't given them enough responsibility or enough incentive to continue to work here, right? It gives you that indication ahead of time to be able to keep those key people within your organization. Last thing I'll mention here is not only can we compare our A players to our C players, but being able to look at what makes an A player an A player, what makes Hannah Hannah, is really, really, really powerful when you're onboarding a brand new employee. We all have our, our onboarding and our ramp up and our training and all those types of systems, right? But if I can take the framework of what Hannah is, to my company and i can give this framework to my brand new hire and say here's exactly what you need to do to be a a player at my firm that's a blueprint for success right that is crystal clear tangible action items for that person to follow to be a contributive and valuable partner or uh, employee at your organization and you can't do anything that I've just mentioned. You can't do any of that crystal clear without the data that you guys have within your systems as of right now. Yeah. And being able to, to digest it, as you mentioned, like yeah. you have to find a way to make sense out of it. Um, that's really interesting. I was curious. I wanted to ask a question based on like, okay, I'm curious based on your experience, if there's often a difference between or a surprise between what it what makes an A player for clients and based on, you know, what they would have assumed historically, but when they have all of that data in front of them, you know, in Protoscore, for instance, does it sometimes surprise people? It does. You know, there are definitely some surprises. Like you know, we had an experience with actually one of our staffing customers. 
who found, you know, we were digging into the data for them. We have a data science team that kind of helps do kind of some next level digestion and analytics within it. And what we found was, and this kind of goes against, maybe don't tell this to your employees, but what we found was employees and staffing employees who spend less time in their ATS were typically more successful. So what we, you know, what you think is, and especially as a manager or recruiting manager or a sales manager, you want your CRM, you want your ATS, you want a ton of activity in there, right? But what we saw was if they had less activity in the ATS and more activity talking with, with, uh, with uh, hiring companies or with uh, placements and things like that, that was where the value was. Right, spending the time here. Of course, we need to do our, you know, our, our 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 ATS and CRM hygiene and things like that. But just being able, to, you know, just doing a lot of the ATS work did not correlate with the outcomes that this particular organization was looking for. This activity over here, the the communication with the clients, with the placements, was really what was key. So that was an interesting surprise, huh. but. Every organization is going to use this data differently, right? Yeah. We, we can't sit here and say, hey, this is this is what you do with this, uh, because every organization, every person at that organization is going to see and use that data differently, right? Yeah. But there are absolutely surprises when uh, you plug in something like ProtoScore, you start looking at this data historically about what that kind of match up and what those connected dots actually show. Interesting. That's yeah, exciting, I think. I think, for people who maybe haven't taken a look at their data, just like, yeah. you know, if you ever feel like you're blocked, maybe there's something that you need to have the full picture to see. That's really yeah. This just underscores the importance of making database decisions, because I think a lot of times um, leaders are subject to so many different pressures in, in formulating, you know, roadmaps and strategies. And a lot of times when, especially in this economy, when things are a little, you know, uncertain you know the market is at times there there's questions are we going to be able to meet our goals are we going to be able to bring in you know the people that we need to bring in to help us achieve those goals and you know i feel like um you know sometimes when you you think about how having access to this information really can change the way that not just leadership um, formulates these plans but also even how the feet on the street, the, pe the people that are actually doing the work actually feel about moving forward and how they're able to move forward. We may make assumptions that, OK, yeah, you need to, you know, take this path and this path is going to lead to this outcome. And a lot of times with those, you know, difficult decisions, there's a lot of emotions involved and, and people can make decisions based on how they feel. But that's a very subjective way to make decisions. And so we might say, OK, well, you need to spend more time making sure all your data is accurate and you need to spend some time doing research and making sure you contact the right person. You know, we may say that 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 needs to be an emphasis of 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 your job and, and the time that you take when you're doing your job. But really where the rubber meets the road is actually when you see the outcomes are less related to maybe something you assumed based on an emotional subjective decision would actually help your team to be successful. The data tells you a different story. So you establish a different baseline of what it re what is necessary for your A player to be successful. You, you formulate best practices, you're able to identify the things that really need, you know, the focus of your time and energy versus the things that we thought or felt when we didn't have that data driving those decisions. So, right. you know, again, taking subjectivity out of decision making for, for leadership requires data. Um, taking subjectivity out of decision making for salespeople and recruiters requires data. And I also wonder how having the right tech in place and the teams that are working that, that are the feet on the street, how does that alleviate some of the stresses of, am I doing enough? Am I doing what I'm supposed to be doing to achieve my goals, right? Because without actual feedback in the form of numbers, how can you really know? It's in the ether. So this really brings it back down to the importance of having the right tech stack and making sure that everything is talking to each other in the way that it, it needs to be. Um, this also just kind of highlights the importance of having strong integrations as well. I think keeping everything in one place, right? The, the thing that, that Hannah mentioned, you know, when, when kind of sharing her story, um, making sure that we have one full data story, one point of access. 
Um, and with the, you know, the evolution of technology in this space, I just really feel solutions like Protoscore and Ringover are really positioned to help these organizations to really drive those outcomes that they're looking for. So of course, Jake, um, would you like to share uh, any of the staffing tech that you know are effective for performance tracking? I'm certain that Protoscore fits that bill in a lot of ways. Yeah, I mean, you know, look, there's there's a lot out there, right? You know, uh, every day I feel like we're getting some some new ATS or some new you know phone system or something like that, right? Um, but there's a, a, a few key good ones, you know, and I think it's going to be what the fit is for you. You know, I'm not, not going to sit here and tell you that, you know, uh, Protoscore is perfect or, or Ringover is perfect uh, yeah. or Bullhorn is perfect, right? All of these companies uh, have their fits, right? And so I think the biggest thing off the bat is having an ATS that works for you. Uh, there's a lot of great options out there uh, that we partner with, that I'm sure Ringover partners with as well on looking at uh, what ATS works for you based off of your size, based off of your niche, based off of your goals. That's that's your Bible, right? That's where everything comes from. Yep. Uh, having a UCAS system that you can trust um, because so much of the staffing work uh, that is done is, is going through uh, your UCAS system. Uh, so much of what they do on a daily basis is going through that. Um, when you're looking at your ATS, when you're looking at your, your UCAS system, if you're looking at making a change or if this has been a catalyst for you to, to make a change, look at what analytics are provided within those tools. Um, there, it is no longer enough for an ATS to be a uh, holder of information right of just your 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 source of truth for a client or or a candidate right it, it's not enough for it to be that it is no longer enough for a ucas system to just make a phone call or send a text message um, if your tools are only doing that for you you should look at making a change um, the tools every tool that you have at your disposal now should provide you deep analytics and deep reporting on the activity within that tool because that's a great starting point as we as we think back to the, the first question that was asked here um, so having that information to be able to use either within the ats or within your ucas your office suite etc to be able to use as a starting point when you're getting affiliated and and introducing using data to run your organization okay that's a great starting point and so when you're looking at a tool like Ringover, which has exceptional reporting, exceptional analytics, exceptional insights onto, you know, it doesn't just make phone calls. It gives you this huge additional value on looking at how the employees are using that tool. What are the success metrics on that phone call or text message? What are the cadence steps we set up, et cetera, et cetera, right? The things that we once thought of as kind of uh, fun bells and whistles that we won't use every day are key. They are, they are invaluable now to be able to use. Um, implementing a tool like Protoscore, shameless plug here, I think is that next step that makes a ton of sense for not only the staffing customers that we have on board right now, but maybe for your organization as well. Coalescing that data into one place so that not only does it take some of that bandwidth down on, on you as an individual of having to find and digest and make meaningful insights out of that data, but coalescing it into one place so that you can see trends over time, right? So that you can easily see how the employees are working in their office suite, in their ATS, in their UCAS, in their Slack, et cetera, being able to look at those tools together um, to be able to not only coalesce that data into one place, but then action from it. Because when we talk to companies or organizations who are familiar with that data, who do understand that it's there and that it's valuable, the main question to us is, so then what? So what do I do with it now, right? Like, okay, cool, I've got it all. It's all here. I can go into Ringover. I can go into Bullhorn or Aviante. Um, I can go and look at these tools and see it, but I don't know what to do with it, right? Like, I, And maybe I know what to do with it as the CEO of this company, but how do I teach my managers how to use it on a daily basis with their direct reports? 
right? That's the big kind of step that you guys then have to take is how do we then kind of make that transition over? So a tool like Protoscore that coalesces that data, that shows you their trends, that shows you really granularly how the employees are working, but then also gives you those coaching insights, those, those uh, productivity insights, the engagement insights on what that data, all of that data actually means so that every level of your, your organization can use it. So C-suite can look at full organization, your director of recruiting can look at the recruiting organization, and Hannah, who is one of your star recruiters, can also use that information to self-coach themselves, to look at how they're performing, to look at what their trend has been, to see if uh, how they can improve or maintain a high level of performance. So I would say that those are, are the key points there, uh, depend, dependent on what status you are of, of kind of starting with this data journey that you're on. I think just getting those tools that you're comfortable with, looking at the data and analytics that are, are in there, making a change if you don't see those data and analytics in there, and then implementing a tool like Protoscore to kind of tie that all together as well. Yep, I couldn't say it better. Thank you, Jake, for that explanation. <laughs> I think one thing I just want to add on there is not necessarily about what to choose, because you're right, there's going to be different systems that fit different companies. Uh, but ultimately, you know, gathering that data is the most important thing. Uh, but I think from the story you shared earlier about one of the surprises between, you know, a players and, and what was expected and what ended up making a difference. I think, you know, I have no idea if this was their what ended up making a difference for them. But what I maybe am deducing from that is simplicity is incredibly important. Uh, try to find which is the integrations Brooke was mentioning, making sure you have, you know, multiple systems that are doing the high level things, but also trying to make sure that they integrate in a way that makes your salesperson, your recruiter's life simple, because then they can go on the road and be in person and talk with people or, you know, do whatever makes them successful, but you are not forsaking that data in the process. So you're still gathering it in the way that you're more you know, in that example, your people who are living more outside of the ATS, as you will, uh, if you have the right UCAS system, it'll sync into the ATS when they're making calls on the road. So you don't have to worry about forsaking data by letting somebody go do something that makes them successful. So if you have the right tools in place and it's simple to use and you can be confident at the end of the day that what you need to capture to understand your business is getting captured regardless of work style, then I think you're in a really good place. So I know that probably sounds hard to figure out, but really starting with integrations and what works well and is natively integrated specifically with your ATS is going to be a really good place to start. Yeah, Hannah, whatever whatever you end up doing for the attendees here, or whoever listens to this, it has to create value. It mm -hmm. is not, it's not worth doing this for the exercise of, of finding data, right? It has to create value for your organization. And that value comes in dedicating resources appropriately, whether we need extra headcounts in certain areas, whether we need different or, or better usage of certain tools, whether we need better time commitments, uh, whether we need to see more collaboration between certain teams, right? It has to create value for your organization. Uh, otherwise, it's just an exercise in time because you're gonna spend a lot of time trying to get this information together. You're gonna to spend a lot of time trying to digest what it means for you, uh, connecting the dots, as I've mentioned before. That's gonna take time uh, if you're not using a tool like Protoscore uh, that, that can pull that in together for you. Um, so your overarching goal as you go through this exercise, however you choose to approach it, is what am I hoping to get out of this and what value do I think it will create for my organization? because you can spin your wheels a lot. You know, we've had a lot of, of people we've talked to who said, oh, I think I can do that myself. And they come back to us a month later and going, I tried <laughs> and I didn't get anything out of it, right? Um, so make sure that you have that goal always in sight of, okay, I'm gonna do this to hope to see this so that I can do this. Yeah, absolutely. Couldn't agree more. And I was just thinking as you were sharing, um, Hannah, about how much of a relief 
um, it must be to the folks in the field to know that they don't have to police their own activity in order to substantiate their efforts, yes. right? Just to know that, yeah, I can go out on the field and I can focus on selling because everything that I'm doing is being captured. It's being reviewed and analyzed. And that might be nerve, nerve wracking for some people, but the people that have the integrity and are bringing their A game every day know that they have been empowered by this to go out and do what they do best, which is to focus on sales. And that is ultimately going to increase growth or improve growth um, and lead to a better bottom line. So Hannah, I'd love to invite you to share a little bit more about Ringover specifically. Um, if anybody who's been listening to Hannah and Jake today, I've had their interest peaked around how Ringover or ProtoScore might be able to assist you in overcoming these performance um, okay. tracking issues. I'd love to hear you share, Hannah, how Ringover um, could potentially transform staffing performance and productivity through our suite of solutions. Yeah, for sure. So uh, we've been throwing around the term UCAS. Um, Ringover would be one of the solutions that would meet that need. So we are a cloud-based phone system. At our core, we're going to cover everything that the phone system you have right now covers um, in the cloud. Um, beyond that, we have <clears throat> really solid analytics on all activities from your communication suite, as well as um, Empower, which is our AI tool that will create these what we call smart transcripts that are looking for keywords you train it to look for in each transcript so that it's really easy to navigate and to find the information that you need. It's helpful for me for note taking, like, you know, I might be going back, at, you know, as a recruiter, I might have been going back to look for what what was that hourly pay rate? And if I have a moment and ring over, it's going to pull that out for you. So huge time saver. But it also gives coaching feedback on your quality of call, what the mood was like on the call and how you can improve. So really nice ways to you know, add in, you know, as Jake was saying earlier, you, you need a phone system, but it needs to do the other things. Well, we have a phone system that does a lot more, including with AI. Uh, and just because of our dedication to integrations and specifically to ATSs and CRMs, we are one of our main goals for you is that we'd make sure that all your data uh, from those calls, any notes taken, any tags on the phone call are going to end up in your ATS ultimately. So that, yes, you can use the data and ring over and, you know, separately, but you can know that it's going to get logged and that it lives in that system. Uh, and finally here, you'll see Cadence on the left-hand side. Cadence is a really wonderful business development activity tool that can create sales cadences, it's aptly named, where you get to choose you know, the sequence of sending an email, making a phone call, LinkedIn activity, and then put people into the cadence and let it roll. And then it gives your team a lot of confidence of what they need to do that day. So you show up, you're like, okay, how can I successfully try to reach out to this contact eight to 10 times or whatever it might be that you're trying to do? Well, Cadence allows you to create steps and then move them from one to the next to be confident you're touching that contact not just through the phone, but also maybe through text, LinkedIn, email, all those things uh, to ensure that you're doing everything multi-channel and doing the, your best to get in touch with that person the way that they prefer. Because we all know everybody prefers to be contacted in different ways. So Cadence helps organize that and empower the team to, to get that done in a meaningful way. Um, and again, all those activities would be logged back to your ATS. So really wonderful tool with a huge emphasis on making sure we simplify your life, but don't forsake the the really awesome, cool tools along the way to make it even better. Awesome. Thank you for sharing, Hannah. Yeah. And Jake, um, would you like to share with us about how ProtoScore can provide visibility and those critical insights into how recruiters are working? Sure. Yeah. And I see one of the, the questions from Naomi. Thanks for the question, Naomi. Um, I, I'll touch on here about uh, how does ProtoScore get that data. So ProtoScore is an employee productivity tool. Um, and so what we do is we uh, aggregate the data across the suite of tools that your, your teams use. So the Office Suite, the ATS, the UCAS, which we've talked about heavily, this, this tool, but we also do things like Slack and Zoom and uh, individual uh, websites and things like that to be able to show you exactly how your teams are working and you can re really get granular on the employee level for exactly how they're working. We aggregate that data up and up so that we can look at it department specific, role specific, we can even look at the entire organization. 
And we develop a lot of insights out of that information. So as I talked about, we can show uh, comparisons between A players and C players. We can look at things like work patterns. Uh, what's the most productive and least productive workday? We can look at uh, work habits. So uh, of a workday, how much time is active? What's their prime time, et cetera, et cetera. We can even show you the difference in productivity uh, when your employees are remote versus when they're in the office. So that's one of the key points I brought up earlier about we see all this stuff on the news about hybrid work is dead and remote work is dead. Well, I want to know how it is for my organization because Hannah and Brooke might work great remotely. Right. So I don't want to make a big change and lose them because I saw something on CNN. I want to be able to look at my my team and see how they they perform uh, based on, off of that type of work schedule. Uh, but we can show you really deep insights too, like uh, internal versus external meetings, how your teams collaborate with each other, uh, which shows a really healthy organization. Are there people who are primed to be in a, in a manager or a position? Uh, and all those types of things, but really getting a hold of exactly how your employees are working so that we can make the improvements for the employees themselves. The way we get that data to answer Naomi's question, uh, the way we get that is by connecting to those business tools via API. So you guys may or may not be familiar with uh, our particular kind of brand of tools. A lot of them require what's called an agent to be downloaded on the computer. That agent is on the computer and looks at everything on that computer, which is a little bit much if you're asking an employee like myself, right? That kind of crosses the line because not only does it look at the work activities, but it also looks at the personal stuff that I'm doing, right? If I'm listening to music in the background or if I access my bank account or if I'm looking at a gift for my wife or something like that, right? These are all things that that agent would pull in and look at. It also creates a lot of noise. So if you're thinking about all the data that you would see just in the business tools, that's a lot of data itself. If you add on top of that, all of that non-work data, that's a lot of noise to have to kind of dig through and, and try to understand how that fits into the other half of their day. So what we do instead is we only connect to those business tools via API. There's nothing living on the computer and we don't see anything outside of those business tools. So that allows us to have clean, valuable data for you, uh, being able to look at really what's important to how those employees work. Uh, but what it also does is it allows us to pull data from wherever it occurs. So the agent living on the computer looks at that one work device. Protoscore's API solution looks at the, the work done on those tools, regardless of, of, of device. So I know I do a lot of work for my cell phone. Sometimes I'll work for my iPad. As long as I'm using those business tools, Protoscore pulls that data in so that you know and you can trust the data that you're seeing is comprehensive and total, which is really great for us to be able to show you. That was a great question. And Naomi asked a follow-up question that I think is probably pretty appropriate for this point in the conversation. How do you find employees respond to being trapped? That's a good question. Um, you know, and, and when we're doing, when we're talking with prospective customers, I like when this question comes up, uh, I always get a little bit weird, uh, fearful when the, um, when that, uh, that CEO comes on and says, oh, I just want to see who's not working. And it's like, well, we're, that's not really <laughs> come our goal. Right. <laughs> but when we're, when we're talking with somebody who does have their employees in mind, uh, and says, okay, I want to know how this is going to be received by them because our culture is important to us. It's really key for us to keep these people and not scare them off because they think we're spying on them or micromanaging them. I think good. Like that's exactly who we want to be talking to because Protoscore was built from the ground up years ago with the employee in mind. Um, so we've never had uh, employee revolt. We've never had uh, people get super cra uh, crazy uh, upset with this or anything like that. The biggest thing that we focus on, in addition to providing you guys a really valuable tool, is making sure that onboarding and training goes well. Um, so we train everybody from leadership to managers to the employees themselves. As we brought up a few times, the employees have their own dashboard to be, look at, be able to look at their data to see how they're performing and where they can make those changes. Um, so it's typically very well recepted, uh, received once we're able to uh, communicate along with the, the organization itself of why this is being implemented. 
you know, this goes back to the first question I answered of, of kind of where to start is making sure that your employees are on board with what the overall goal is of using this data to help improve the company, right? Mr. C Mr. and Mrs. Yeah, CEO, yeah, they're not turning this on and, and enacting this to try to have gotchas or to try to push people out. We're using this because we have it at our fingertips. It can make us better. And without ProtoScore, we're not able to use it as effectively as, mm -hmm. as we can. So yeah. I want to, you know, me, Mr. CEO or Mrs. CEO, I want to turn this on so that I can see exactly what I can do as a leader to help you improve. Mm -hmm. And so once we're able to sh not only train on that, but show that within the tool itself, show them exactly how we connect to the tools that we're not looking at personal information, train the managers on the appropriate way to use it and things like that. Once we were able to kind of communicate that all the way downstream, it's a really smooth and easy transition. That's awesome. I think it will also kind of go back to, you know, how clear is your message about what your goals actually are? And I think when everybody can kind of get on board and they understand the intention and then just by having those systems and, and um, software in place that that can actually prove over time. Yes, this is the collective and overarching goal that we're all working towards and that you can really help build buy in that way, I feel. Yes. Well, well, thank you for answering that, Jake. So I have one last question here. We've got a few more minutes left before we close up today. And uh, Karinjo asked a great question. I'd love to have you answer this, Hannah. Um, he, Karinjo said, Jake mentioned using data to identify employees that may be pulling away or burned out and being able to address this early on. Can you elaborate on this? But I would love to hear your perspective, Hannah, as someone who's both been a recruiter in the field in recent years and also having the perspective of how tech can really come in and and provide information that can help us to get greater visibility to performance what are your thoughts on this um, how we can use data to identify this and um, has this been something that you've in your own experience been able to identify and use in a positive way perhaps yeah happy to answer and feel free to color in the the lines afterwards jake so in my experience, you're you're right on, Brooke. I've experienced this firsthand. I've been, I mentioned earlier, I'm a bit of a perfectionist. So when I was in recruiting, when I was in sales, uh, the expectations of my daily KPIs were very serious to me because I am a perfectionist. So I was trying to balance that and also hitting my quota. And there were times in recruiting, and this was nobody's fault, but just probably from lack of having the data of what made us successful, they're just you know giving us goals per day to make sure that we're putting in the work um, and, and hoping that that's gonna get us where we're going because there wasn't enough data to know for sure. And because of how I'm wired, I have been the burnt out person before. And I would say one of the ways the data would show that is that if you have somebody who's hitting all their metrics and hitting all their goals of placements or, you know, winning new clients, whatever, or if they're full desk, both. Um, and then all of a sudden you see a steep decline, less engagement, less calls, uh, their placements are going down. It may not always look super steep. It may just be subtle, but if you start to see a little less engagement, then you can probably know that that person, especially if they've always been hitting their goals, really cares to be doing a good job. And it's probably killing them that they're not, but they've really run out of steam. And I think just depending on the personality, there's different ways to, to handle that. But for someone like me, it would have been really great to take a step back, have the data to see what was working and maybe reassess a more manageable workload to continue consistently bringing the company success and myself success. But I'd love to hear, Jake, from your experience, especially with ProtoScore clients, what that's looked like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, you know, it's it's huge. You know, like uh, whether it's it's seeing the person pulling away or seeing the person who's who's doing way too much, you know, you've put way too much on their plate and, and they're not going to say something, right? Because especially in a remote environment, I'm sure it's true in office, when you have those weekly one-to-ones with your manager, the last thing you wanna do as an employee is complain or say, hey, I'm burnt out, right? Uh, it takes a lot of kind of self-realization to say, hey, I'm struggling. Um, and it's very hard to say that to your manager, regardless of where you are and, and who your manager is. Um, so having having that feedback loop without relying on your direct report to say that to you 
and being able to see it in the way that they're working and being able to address it uh, is key. Um, because, you know, for most of the people on this call, for most of the people who, who are, are good managers, they want to keep their good people. Right. And so what we don't want to do is, is have a lack of communication or or a lack of self-realization lead to a, a really good person on your team leaving the organization. Um, and so getting ahead of that, whether it's performance based, whether it's it's value to the company, whether it's, um, you know, maybe they have something going on at home. Right. Maybe, you know, you see them pulling away and you go, you have a conversation with them and they say, Look, you know, my mom's been real sick. I've been dealing with all that. They haven't felt comfortable sharing that with you yet, but you can get ahead of that, right? You can go, no problem. Like, you know, let us know how we can help. Let's shift some responsibilities, right? Like I said, you know, the, the whole point of this isn't meant to be a, a gotcha tool or, you know, a, a, a micromanaging tool. It's to get ahead and look at the leading indicators for their performance. Could that mean just looking at it strictly from quota? Absolutely. But it could it look at make it. Uh, could you also look at it from a employee health point of view um, and seeing, you know, making sure that the people that we have that are great aren't getting overworked and we're dedicating the appropriate resources there? Yes. For the people that are pulling away for maybe the coaching I'm giving them is wrong. Right. Maybe I'm trying to coach them up and I'm giving them uh, wrong information. Um, and I'm not helping them the way that they need to be helped, but I can see that now. Instead of them putting in their two weeks, having the conversation and going, I could have saved this two months ago. You know, I could have put these changes in, but they're already out the door, right? So that's really key is, is just being able to get that insight, getting those red flags as early as possible to be able to address it. Um, whatever the issue yeah. is, be able to address it and, and try to make improvements. Yeah. And that ensures the continuity of the organization as well, because, you know, again, if you do identify where, you know, there's been a decrease in productivity um, and you do identify some you know, underlying reasons, whether it's professional or personal or whatever that is, you can quickly pivot and make those adjustments to ensure that you're still have the right resources aligned, the right tools in place to ensure that you're meeting your goals as a company. Um, and I feel like, you know, that that awareness that this brings, um, again, uh, coupled with just an overarching objective that everybody is aligned with, it, it certainly will allow people to be more open to, you know, having those conversations based on, again, what we see in the data. How is the data driving our decisions to ensure that we're meeting our collective goals as a business? So, yeah, it's it's a really beautiful thing. I'm excited to see how a product score and ring over together can help more companies in the future. So we are at about three minutes past um, and would like to thank all of you for your time today and contributing to the discussion with our great questions towards the end of our webinar. Jake and Hannah, thank you both for sharing your expertise about the respective companies that you represent and all that we're capable of together. Um, if any of you would like to uh, reach out to us. We will be providing some information after the webinar, as well as access to a recording of the webinar um, for you to revisit if you would like to just revisit some of these conversations and facts that we shared. So I want to thank you all again so much for attending and again to our presenters. And um, again, we hope to hear from some of you in the near future about how Ring Over and, webinar and uh, Protoscore can help you all to gain visibility to your performance data and eliminate some of those tracking challenges that you're experiencing now. So thank you all again. We'll conclude our webinar. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Thanks guys. Thanks everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.